Hi, this is Janos, it's Reverb Audio, and I'm continuing with my Le Petit series, which is uh, Jean Hiraga's uh, design. And it's a single driver speaker, also known as full range driver or wideband driver, uh, because, um, well, and, uh, and what I've done is that I made uh, quite a big mistake <laughs> about it because uh, I did not read the designs properly and I was calculating with a, a 2 cm, 20 mm thick cabinet cabinet thickness as 20 mm and in the meanwhile the text clearly points out and writes out that it's 25 mm so um, I received a, a, a comment on that, so thank you very much for, for commenting. And, uh, and now let's see how does that impact the computer models of Le Petit. So this is what we have been working with so far. And uh, um, I'm going to have one more video uh, of that four-part series. Uh, I'm not sure yet I, I, whether I will schedule it before this video or after. Well, I see one or the other. But uh, but what I want to say is that this would be the one here. Let me click. Let's just show it. This is with the right size. So as you see, when we use a, a 25 millimeter thick cabinet, which is a one inch thick plywood. The 20 millimeter, that's the three quarter inch plywood. So basically, if you make that with those outer dimensions, three quarter inch ply, that, that's the green curve that you will get as behavior. And if you made it, make it with one inch with that same dimension, it will you will get the black curve. And as you see, with the smaller volume, with the same uh, port length, we get this program gives us 48 hertz for tuning frequency. So quite a bit higher than the uh, little larger model uh, cabinet. So there it gives us 44 hertz. Now, if you remember Jean Hiraga's paper, show the much lower tuning frequency for the port. I think he, he talked about 40 hertz, that that's what he actually measured. And that's what I noticed too, that when you do modeling within ISD, your actual tuning frequency that you will measure will be lower than what the model predicts. And uh, this is not just my experience, but my friend's experience as well, who taught me how to use this software. And uh, it seems to be something universal that this software predicts uh, higher tuning frequency than what you will uh, find with your application after you build the cabinet. So, uh, so what can we see from these two? As you see, uh, for the black, let's just choose for the black. This is the correct one for Jean Hiragas. And it shows that here in the mid base in this region, we have like almost a dB more of the energy going, but it will start to drop faster. And with, so basically if you, uh, okay, let's just back, backtrack a little bit. So, so as you will see in real life when you build it, your actual tuning frequency will be a little bit lower, but it will be lower in both cases. So if you were to build it based on uh, using uh, one inch thick plywood, then you would have a certain output from that speaker. And if you would build it with a three quarter inch plywood, then in the mid base, like below about 70 hertz, it would be about a dB weaker. But when you when you look under 45 hertz or so, it will be uh, quite noticeably more powerful. How much more powerful? Like here, it intersects uh, the the 40 hertz line. Uh, where does it intersect? Let's click there. Uh, so the 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 one inch thick it intersects at 
81.7 dB and the other one it's 86 dB so we have 4.3 dB plus at at uh, at the low end and now it showed this for 40 hertz but in real life it will be the frequencies will work out a little different because the port tuning will be lower one than what we see here but the the, the relationship with, between the two will be the same is that basically at the very low end uh, if you make it with the three quarter inch plywood with the same outer sizes then you will have 4 dB plus for the very low energy at the price of roughly 1 dB loss between about uh, 47 Hertz to about 80 Hertz or so so basically uh, but you will notice this actual difference if you build both cabinets and then you you can uh, test them for yourself so I cannot give you a prediction which one would you like to build uh, go with your preferences what you think however there is one thing that I want to point out and now just let's just go for this part and let me just start drawing so this is how the Le Petit looks like you have like a square uh, baffle and you have your uh, driver here and it has a panel in the front and I had questions about it is that panel there necessary or not and uh, how will that affect the sound and why do we have uh, one inch thick plywood so this is like one inch thick 25 millimeter thick the, the size that go back and also this thing here the front buffer is 25 millimeter everything all the wood you use is 25 millimeter thick including this front baby plate so why is that there so actually that whole that thing there it's not uh, to make it look really weird but it does have two functions uh, one of the functions is to add additional rigidity to the cabinet so I have not uh, talked about this yet but this is an inert cabinet and uh, and as we are using one inch thick plywood that's really really thick that is equivalent to using a two inch thick like a five centimeter thick MDF is as rigid as a five centimeter thick cabinet the, and that for a four inch driver right and uh, in addition the inside is lined with felt and the felt is basically glued it's attached to the uh, to the baffle so it, it's right here the inside and the entire inside is covered with felt and what that does is that it further reduces the resonance that these uh, baffles would be making so so the cabinet itself is very very inert and uh, for uh, this tiny driver and they don't need to use extra internal bracing and put in like a iron cage or whatnot because uh, just we are look, we're looking at a tiny driver we don't have acoustic energy down to 20 hertz or 10 hertz so we don't need to go there but using a one inch thick ply plus the fat glued to it that's enough to make it uh, very inert and and the reason why because on in the text it does say that it's really critical how you do the inside of the cabinet uh, you must put the fat on you must not you uh, and you should avoid putting uh, like an acoustic foam filler inside like an acoustic filler like, like those uh, fibers and that's because you don't want the inside to uh, slow down the sound you want the felt on the sides to make the uh, the sides resonate less and why do we want to make the sides resonate less because we are dealing with a tiny four inch driver and when you have a tiny four inch driver this four inch driver is really comfy playing at high frequencies 
and uh, and what we want to achieve with this loudspeaker is base response and how can we uh, ensure that we have an output that is uh, enriched in the base region is by trying to keep the cabinet contribution as low as possible and why is that that's because the the, the height of the cabinet is only 54 centimeters and that's not high enough that if it was active it would not contribute to the deep sound it would barely touch mid bass it, it wouldn't even touch mid bass it would just enforce sound in the upper bass upper bass so basically with those 54 centimeters about 340 hertz so that's the lowest frequency where if this cabinet was active it would add SPL it would add output from 340 hertz up and when you go back to the Hiraga article you will notice that uh, where this loudspeaker need help is not the, the 340 hertz up it, it really needs help for, for the bass and when we look at the models here uh, let, let's just go back you see look 340 hertz is about here and, and you see the energy the output of the driver still rises half a db from 340 hertz now if the active cabinet would add energy to that then then it would rise even more and and compared to that the the base would be non-existent and uh, so what we need is that we must avoid the uh, cabinet adding energy to the uh, upper base through mid-range and then when we prevent that then this drop in the mid base it won't be as uh, pronounced we want to keep it as uh, as subdued as possible and uh, why will it work in the in your room that's because if you put it in a small room then the shredder frequencies will come like like here like filling it up with energy and then you can really really fill this up and and that will be your actual output in a room that that curve that i just traced over the screen and not this thing and of course if you put it in a very big room then this is what you are going to get and the mid base will disappear but uh, no one would put a four inch driver in in a concert hall right because you won't be able to hear a thing if you want a very big room you need speakers that can put out spl to match there in a room where you would put the le petit those sizes of rooms will help oops will help out with the mid base and what we want from the cabinet is to uh, help only down that region and going back to this front piece here what does that do that does a buffer step correction because when you look at uh, hiraga's uh, le petit the uh, driver the Fostex 103 is mounted on the front so if if you look from the side like like this is the the front buffer the front of the speaker and we have this extra panel sticking out and we have the driver basket sticking out as well and now as it sticks out the, the sound waves as they they start coming forward you see they start bouncing from this plate and and they are not curving back here to the plate and then coming forward and and this is a very easy and very quick way to do a buffer step correction for a driver that's sticking out from the buffer and and this problem that we mount the basket in front of the the face plate of the loudspeaker that's the cause of most uh, mid-range coloration mid-range problems with the drivers themselves because the sound as it starts to propagate it will just curve back it, it will through the edge of the basket and then will bounce forward from the buffer and now when we have this extra buffer there it will act as a buffer step correction 
and you will not have that problem. So if you want to get rid of this thing from the front, what you should do is that, so now we have this scenario. So this is the front, the faceplate, and here's your driver sticking out, and here's that thingy on the front. So if you want to remove this, then what I recommend is that here is your faceplate to move it uh, on the inside. And why? Because this doesn't only uh, add a buffer step correction, it also makes the cabinet more rigid. So more dead, more inert, and you want that rigidity. So put it on the inside. So now, as you have guessed, this is the inside of the cabinet, right? Like that. Nice skills, all right. And if you put it on the inside, then you need to do two things. Number one is resize the inner volume. Make sure this is about 2.5 liters that the that the front buffer uh, that that front piece takes up. So you need to recalculate the the size of the cabinet so that it will be 26.5 plus 2.2.5 uh, liters. So you want a 28 liter cabinet because this thing will take away 2.5 liters and and the port will will be just here will be same length same size port it will be just not going through faceplate thingy it will be going through thingy faceplate uh, but the length nothing changes just the uh, just the outer box size of the cabinet and the other thing that you would need to do is instead of having the driver out here move it on the inside so your driver is not sticking out to the front but it's recessed into the faceplate of the cabinet and then you don't need a buffer step correction because your basket is hidden inside the uh, faceplate so Thank you for bearing with me with this series and uh, and after this video I will show that part four of the series that I made before shooting this video with the with the wrong 33 liter sizes and uh, after you seen that next video the part four I will make one more on the driver selection because as you as as we have all noticed. It's not easy to get the exact same driver, FE103 Sigma. Uh, but I'm going to show you a couple of drivers uh, that, that you could try instead, which are available today. And uh, I'm going to give uh, also recommendations on the cabinet, because John Hiraga gave a warning, or I would say a, a beacon at the end of the description of Le Petit is that he said that this, the way he described the putty is not the ultimate execution of it, but it is just uh, uh, geared towards ultimate simplicity uh, and nothing special, and you don't need extra skills for that. You could improve on it, but that will take uh, additional effort. And uh, I will share my thoughts about that, what you can do for those things, and uh, what additional drivers you could do or use and I'm going to show you current 4-inch driver alternatives but I'm also going to touch base on 4.5-inch driver and a 6-inch driver if you want to build a bigger version of the Le Petit because maybe uh, you want to reach uh, higher peak volumes or, or a little bigger room or you want uh, even lower frequency extension so that will be a really exciting thing as well. So thank you for tuning in, have an astonishingly good day and have fun thinking about these speakers and building them for yourself. Bye bye!